Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This sentence has a lot of big church words that we need to know what they mean first. Persecution means that you are being harassed, either for who you are or what you believe. It's intentional and consistent and mean. Persecution has been the cause of many wars in history, including World War II, when Nazi Germany persecuted Jewish people. But this verse isn't talking about being persecuted for just anything. It is specifically blessing those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake or for being righteous. Righteousness means acting in a way that is right according to God. It means not using your own moral compass for right and wrong, but living the way God asks his people to live. The problem in Matthew chapter 5 is that early Christians were being persecuted for believing Jesus was who he says he was. Paul was thrown in prison for saying that Jesus was God's son and resurrected from the dead. The Roman government had all the power at this time, including what people believed. And if you did not believe what they believed, you were in trouble. We see all the time in the Gospels when the Pharisees and Sadducees tried to catch Jesus in sin or get him to say something that would go against what God says in the Old Testament. These were, the, Fa the Pharisees and Sadducees were the religious leaders of the time. It says in Matthew 26 that the people who went to arrest Jesus were the chief priests and elders. Jesus knew persecution, especially by other religious people. America was founded upon religious freedom, which means you and I have the right to proclaim Jesus as Lord without any repercussions from the government. So today, you probably won't be slandered by a non-Christian for believing in Christ. You probably won't get harassed or bullied or threatened. You might, but I think the more likely scenario today is being slandered, harassed, or bullied by other people for believing in Jesus differently than they do, or for showing God's love a different way than they are. We all have access to the same words in the Bible, but we all interpret them differently based on our own worldview and tradition. To give you some examples, it can make some Christians uncomfortable or even angry to say that black lives matter because the Bible says that we are all one in Christ Jesus. Or to say that LGBTQ individuals are created and loved by God because the Bible says marriage should be between one man and one woman. Or even that I would stand in front of you and teach a lesson because the Bible says that women are not permitted to teach. But these are all causes I care about standing up for to show Christ's love. So what am I supposed to do with that? These are conversations and arguments that go back to the time of Jesus and will continue until Jesus comes back again. Because we live in a broken world that cannot be perfect and united and whole until God comes down and takes over. There is a way forward though, in our brokenness. We don't have to wait until Jesus comes back to love his people and be his hands and feet. When I'm at a crossroads between what I believe Jesus requires of me and what is right, and when I'm hearing or seeing other Christians saying or doing, I pause, I pray, I reflect on key scriptures. Is what I'm about to do loving God? Am I loving my neighbor? Is it kind? Is it patient? Is it gentle? If the answer is yes, then I should obey, no matter the cost or reaction from others. Jesus speaks directly to this at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. From Matthew 7, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, by the way they act. A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. We will know others are true followers of God by the fruit they bear in God's name. And we will be known by the fruit we bear. Pursuing righteousness in a world that can't agree on what that means is difficult and even costly. 
Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who endure the weight of doing what is right in God's eyes, even when others disagree. Though the goal of righteousness is not to earn your way into the kingdom of heaven. The goal of righteousness is to become like Jesus. Inheriting the kingdom is just an added bonus. May we be people who bear fruit in Jesus and through the Holy Spirit, in loving kindness and endless grace, in such a way that non-believers come to know Jesus and other believers have no doubt in their minds that we are following the one true Lord.